As well as different types of personality disorders, that they, the way they have been uh, uh, classified, the way they have been uh, talked about with reference to their diagnostic criteria in the DSM manual. Till now, what we were doing uh, in this module was that uh, we were broadly looking at different type of problems. Especially, we looked only at the neurotic disorders. Okay, but our attempt was uh, primarily initially to establish distinction between uh, neurotic and psychotic disorders with respect to certain parameters that was one and second uh, we uh, tried our uh, best to globally look at different type of neurotic disorders. Today we are going to uh, talk specifically about two set of disorders the adjustment disorders and the personality disorders. Uh, the way they have been uh, referred to in the uh, DSM manual okay. and therefore, uh, the words that you see here okay, it is basically taken from the DSM manual. First we look at the diagnostic criteria for adjustment disorders. Okay. Now, the most interesting thing that you would find here is that it would talk about the onset period, it would also talk about the duration. Okay, that you should have lived with the symptom for certain period of time. Okay, what should have triggered it? These two things would be common. Three, it would talk about you know the type of symptoms that reflects a particular disorder, and four and most importantly, it would also talk about the rejection criteria. Okay, means uh, if one shows this type of symptom but is also diagnosed with some x y z type of a problem then it is uh, no not supposed to be considered as this particular disorder. So, this is a broad way uh, the way DSM uh, manual no talks about different types of diagnostic criteria. With reference to adjustment disorder it says that the development of emotional or behavioral symptoms in response to an un, uh, to an identifiable stressor occurring within 3 months of the onset of the stress. Okay. So, number 1 uh, the, stre the stressor that has led to certain type of problem should be identifiable. Okay. You cannot report that I do not know why, but I feel this. So, I do not know why is something uh, you know that uh, you have to get rid of when you are making a diagnosis about adjustment disorder. Two, from the ons time of onset, okay, you should realize that the symptoms have started occurring within the first 3 months. Okay. The second criteria is that these symptoms or behaviors are clinically significant as evidenced by either of the following. Okay. First, marked distress that is in excess to what would be expected from exposure to the stressor. So, you find that there is a intense amount of distress that has been associated okay, with this stressor and the reflection of behavior in the behavior is exorbitantly high in nature compared to usually what people show. Say for example, uh, if somebody by and large a large number of people show a problem up to a certain extent. Okay, it would be considered to be that fine by and large in this type of a situation with this type of a stressor by and large people show this extent of behavior. But if you go much beyond that okay, that is the marked distress that you show okay. and second significant impairment in social and occupational functioning. Okay. Occupational also includes academic if you are still into studies. Okay. Now, there is a significant impairment in your social functioning, the way you used to interact with others, okay, the way you, you used to perform your uh, social activities, there is a sharp decline in that. One, two, there is also impairment in terms of your occupational engagement or your academic engagement. Okay. The third criteria is that the stress related disturbances does not meet the criteria for another 
the stress related disturbances they do not meet the criteria for another specific axis 1 disorder axis 1 axis uh, these axis we have not discussed we are not going to do that okay and now comes the rejection criteria the rejection criteria are where you say that the symptom do not represent bereavement okay if you have suffered a loss of somebody very near to you okay and you are in the state of bereavement then you cannot uh, know diagnose the same person okay that you are under this influence of a particular stressor and hence you qualify for adjustment disorder so the symptom should not be you know a representation of bereavement and also once the stressor or its consequence has terminated the symptom do not persist for additional 6 months so you have a stressor that has led to a particular problem okay you show disproportionately high uh, emotional and behavioral symptoms okay uh, especially with respect to impairment in your occupational engagement academic engagement okay also in terms of uh, the marked distress that you show compared to the others okay that should be there but once the stressor is over okay this these symptoms should maximally stay with you till next 6 months not beyond that okay so if a problem meets these diagnostic criteria here you have both the inclusive and the exclusion criteria no that if you have these 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 things then you are included in this disorder the last ones are exclusion criteria no that if you have these 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 things okay then you are excluded from this disorder okay so if it is beyond 6 months you are excluded okay if you are uh, bereaving then you are excluded fine so these are the two exclusion criteria the upper ones are the inclusion criteria okay now this is how adjustment disorder clinically is diagnosed now these uh, adjustment disorders are classified okay as acute or chronic which is basically time dependent you know so if the symptoms less than 6 months then it is considered that the adjustment disorder is of acute nature okay and if the symptoms they exceed beyond 6 months limit then it is considered to be chronic adjustment disorder fine so whether it is acute or chronic it is time dependent okay uh, as we saw in the previous slide the standard template says that uh, once the stressor is available the behavioral and the emotional changes should come in the 3 months after the exposure to the stressor okay and it can maximally you know go up to the symptoms can persist for another 6 months fine now the type of uh, you know problems that are reported in the clinic based on that the adjustment disorder okay uh, has been classified into six different subgroups no so we have six subtypes based on the prominence of the symptom okay the first subtype is with depressed mood okay and the characteristic for that is that you should have a malfunctioning of depressed mood tearfulness okay or feeling of hopelessness which basically uh, you no know, dominates the set of symptoms that you are representing okay so either you are in a complete sinking state very very depressed mood state okay or your depression goes to the extent that you become completely hopeless okay and you recollect certain things and then suddenly you have tears rolling down your eyes okay if these symptoms dominate then it is considered as uh, with depressed mood subtype okay second subtype of adjustment disorder which is with anxiety okay which is manifested uh, in terms of nervousness worry or jittery behavior okay fear of separation from the major attachment figure okay might be manifested in the case of children okay so for adults it's basically nervousness worry and the jittery feeling in children there could be a great fear okay of being separated from the main adult figure whom the child basically attaches himself or herself to okay usually it would be the mother the father 
in the absence of one of the parents it could be uh, you know the caregiver okay so you live with uh, this anxiety okay and the worry the jitteriness this you know dominates over all your symptoms that you reflect the third subtype which is basically a mixed anxiety and depressed mood okay here the manifestation is basically the combination of both so you find yourself in the state of depression you find yourself in the state of hopelessness okay you also experience tearfulness okay and at the same time okay what you also realize is great degree of worry nervousness and many a times you feel very jittery okay so if these two things combine then it is considered to be the third subtype which basically combines both the depressive uh, mood state as well as the anxiety state then the fourth subtype of adjustment disorder which is basically with disturbance of conduct which is manifestation of disturbance in conduct that violates age appropriate social norms and rules there are well defined age specific norms okay society has evolved it and uh, large number of people mostly people follow those norms and if there are uh, violations there are no a minor transgression from the standard template that has been accepted by the society but here what you see is uh, that one keeps on violating the age appropriate norm okay this means that you show great degree of inability in terms of complying to the standard uh, code of conduct that the society has prescribed for somebody of your age okay if that happens if you show great degree of inability in terms of complying to the norm of the society okay and therefore your conduct uh, is far different uh, far deviant compared to the rest of the people of your own age in your society then it is adjustment disorder uh, which has basically the disturbance of conduct okay uh, unfortunately we do not have uh, no survey on our indian population as to what percentage of people in which age bracket okay show these types of things but i am sure uh, you would find a percentage significant percentage okay of people who would fall in this category you no know, who have great degree of inability in terms of complying to certain norms okay uh, i am not suggesting that all those who do what i am going to say now fall in this category but you would find people who have very different type of uh, you know uh, reflection in their behavior one explanation of such behavior could be where uh, you know you have learned in a faulty way so the outcome that one sees is basically an output output of a faulty learning the second possibility could be where you actually have a problem where you have great degree of inability in terms of complying to the norm you must have seen in our country many places work places especially where it's boldly written here no yahan thukna mana hai no don't spit in most of the you no know, buildings you will find it written on the walls okay especially the corners staircases okay the turning point on the staircases i'm sure you must have seen it no but what is the sad part is that you will find people who would ensure that they spit exactly where it is written don't spit same is uh, you no know, uh, urinating at public places no many walls many walls you will find you no know, where on very bold bold font is written there you no know, that one shouldn't urinate here and still you would find the whole place stinks nobody bothers about it Okay. now one way of uh, you know looking at these problems could be that fine you have not made uh, you no know, sufficient option for people to spit or you have not made uh, public toilets at certain uh, distances and therefore okay one has difficulty you know restraining oneself when one feels the urge for doing it okay but what about uh, situations where things are provided facilities are provided but you still do not have uh, uh no that uh, whole generic sense that fine 
a commonsensical behavior you know that this is not to be done and especially problem comes when it is the instructions are clearly written there and you deliberately violate there. Okay. So, when you spit where it is written do not spit, when you exactly urinate where it is written that you should not urinate at this place. Okay. This shows that you have you know if you have that type of an urge there is a need to relook at people who do this thing. I am not saying this is a problem, but I am just giving a very different type of an example. Uh, now we are left with just uh, you know, a couple of more uh, lectures and right from the beginning okay, the whole uh, process that the door has to be shut okay, you would realize that uh, small subset which will make an uh, entry into the room and still would not bother that the door needs to be shut. Today also you witnessed it. No? Now, if uh, you make a small child learn the norm that this is what has to be done, uh, uh, interact with uh, teachers of play groups, nursery, they will tell you know that children they just see it you do not have to even instruct them, they will start following it. This is how the psychology of learning explains uh, the whole process of imitation. When a verbal instruction is given that once the bell goes we formally begin the lecture, the door needs to be shut. Okay, and still you find that 5, 7 people who do not bother complying to the instruction and it is not, not complying on a single day, it is a non-compliance for the full set of 39, 38 days. We are probably on 40, 38 or 39 day, okay. then it is it becomes a cause of concern that what is it that does not make you rethink. Okay compare yourself against those who will ensure that uh, you know they do it meticulously. There must be some difference no, between the two set of people. Okay. So, right from small things like this which might occur very small, but I would say know that there is a need to revisit if I am habitual of doing things the same way, Okay then it becomes a cause of concern. If I have done it today fine it is not a cause of concern, but if I am habitual of doing it then it is a cause of concern. CC will tell you know that many people who will switch on the system, but will not switch it off. Okay. So, the system okay, you have to depute somebody to shut down all the PCs know, after the work hour is over. Okay. Uh, you shift mouse from one PC to the other, but do not ensure that it has to be replaced from where you have taken it back. These are you no know, very small type of things that might look very small okay, in nature, but these are really uh, something that if you repeat in your life, then you should certainly be you know, reflecting upon your own behavior. Okay. Uh, why is it that I have certain type of inability in doing that? What others can very very conveniently perform. Okay. I'm not scaring you. No? but telling you that it is always good to be reflective in nature. Then the fifth subtype which is basically with mixed disturbance of emotion and conduct. Till now we were only thinking that you have difficulty in terms of complying to age appropriate social norms. Now comes a situation where one manifest emotional symptoms okay, such as anxiety as well as inability to uh, know follow the age appropriate norms of the society. Okay. Now, it is far more complicated no? when it is not only your inability to comply to the age appropriate norms of the society, but at the same time you also start showing certain heightened degree of emotions. Okay. Then it really uh, know, uh, becomes a cause of concern. Uh, you will find many people know uh, who would tell you that uh, say you have to board a train sometime in the afternoon, but since last night you have uh, no great degree of anxiety. You have packed something and you check it. Okay, in the dream you see as if you know you have missed the train. You started chasing it, but somehow you couldn't board it. Okay, all types of anxiety gets reflected that could also be a possibility and then you realize uh, that 
on the platform I am sure you must have seen it on Kanpur central also it is very common. A train comes stops people who are inside the train and still has to continue their journey would prefer to get down on the platform for whatsoever reason. Okay. If you have got down to buy something, if you have got down for water, okay, I can understand that no? and you wait till the signal is green and till the uh, no, driver blows the horn okay. and once the train starts moving slowly, okay, then you walk with the train and finally, when the train catches up some speed you run and then board it and there is a great degree of thrill in it, I have done it. I am sure you must have seen you know, people who take great degree of uh, you know, derive great degree of pleasure in doing that. Okay. If you think it rationally how prudent is it for an adult human being okay, to repeat this type of view or even do it once in their life. Okay. Uh, those who, you know, who would give the physiological explanation will tell you that you have you know, such type of exciting activities. Okay, triggers the neurotransmitters in the reward center of the brain. Okay. So, because the reward center of the brain gets reactivated out of such type of activities therefore, you feel an urge to do so. So, Kanpur central and again the next stop again you repeat the exercise, again you repeat the exercise. Okay. You have a reserved seat, but then you take pride in standing near the gate okay, with half the body outside the uh, body of the train. Okay, and great degree of pleasure that you derive out of it. Compare them okay, to somebody who had a very disturbed sleep last night because the next afternoon he has to board a train. Okay. Somebody who would know uh, look at the crowd which is making an attempt to board a particular bogey through a gate okay, and you feel great degree of inability. There would be very few, but uh, I have seen cases now where somebody would return back home and saying that oh there were too many passengers no i could very easily understand that i won't be able to get into the train and therefore i came back there's no point traveling when i can't get into it okay and then comes the last subtype what is called as the unspecified category here what you see is the manifestation of maladaptive reactions to stresses that are not classified in the five subtypes that we have discussed. Okay. Such reactions include physical complaint, social withdrawal or academic inhibitions. Okay. So, these are the prominent things that you see, five sub categories very clearly defined. Okay. Sixth, you find that this person has uh, no, some adjustment disorder, but cannot be classif uh, classified into the first five subtypes, okay. but by and large shows certain types of physical symptoms, certain type of social withdrawal, uh, certain type of academic inhibitions then you consider that he belongs again to the adjustment disorder category, but of the sixth subtype. Okay. So, this was all about the adjustment disorders. Okay. Now, we come to personality disorders. I must tell you one thing, I deliberately made an attempt not to touch on any of the disorders which are of grave order. Okay. Otherwise, if you read uh, you know, the DSM manual or the ICD uh, classification, you have a thick volume which you know describes all, all, all types of things. No? But those are you know, the guiding uh, principles for the practitioners. Okay. I have deliberately chosen to remain on the brink. Okay. And throughout uh, this course what we have been doing is that we would always start from normal and come very, 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 very close to abnormal pattern of behavior, but we do not touch abnormality again turn back. Repeatedly we have swinged between normal to extreme of behavior which could be considered very close to abnormality. But somehow personality disorder many of it you would realize that crosses that brink. And therefore, uh, you would find behaviors which are little uh, more grave in their nature. Now, personality disorder has been defined as an enduring pattern of inner experience and behavior that deviates 
markedly from the expectations of the individual's culture. Remember one thing, cultural norms are still given priority even in clinical diagnosis. Okay. So, when you draw the line that this is what is expected out of you, okay, that line might vary from culture to culture that might be uh, very much true and therefore, uh, it is always recommended uh, that when you are consulting an expert because you are uh, know having some type of a symptom, it is always good to consult somebody okay, uh, who belongs to your culture or if you do not have the access to somebody who is who belongs to your culture, then meet somebody who is much more aware about your cultural norms. Otherwise, there could be certain type of misjudgments. Okay. So, you realize that there is an inner exp pattern in the inner experience as well as in behavior, okay, which primarily deviates from the cultural expectation, the cultural norms. Okay with an onset in adolescence or early adulthood. So, the onset of such problems would be either adolescent years or adulthood. Remember that the problem uh, in children are classified separately okay. and by and large it has been observed worldwide in the clinics that uh, most of the reported cases in the clinics they fall between 16 to 40, 45 years of age. The people who come forward with the symptoms, they fall in this bracket. So, the onset has to be in the adolescent years or in the adulthood, early adulthood and the manifested behavior is pervasive and inflexible leading to distress or impairment. So, great degree of you know, uh, inflexibility as well as pervasive pattern, repetition is there in the behavior. This pattern is manifested in two or more of the following areas. No? So, you have four major areas cognitive functions, affective functions, interpersonal functioning and impulse control. And out of these four minimum of two or more areas should be affected. So, minimum two has to be influenced only then you consider that perhaps this problem okay, needs to be revisited and it could be one of the personality disorders. Okay. So, once again you see just like adjustment disorder here also, you have certain inclusion criteria, you have certain exclusion criteria. This is very common in all type of psychological disorders, psychiatric disorders. Okay. There has to be a well defined inclusion as well as exclusion criteria. Uh, you have not been exposed to experimentations in psychology, but if you look at the scientific literature in psychology and the way uh, psychological experiments are performed. Okay. You would find that for all type of sample selection, the experimenter has to define the inclusion as well as the exclusion criteria. Okay. That if you meet these criteria only then you will be qualified to be considered as a participant in the study. Okay. At the same time you also define that if you have these set of things then you will not be accepted as a participant in my study. Okay. In all uh, no, uh, journal articles, we will find very clearly in the studies the inclusion and ex exclusion criteria being defined. So, is the case with clinical diagnosis too. Okay. Now, we are uh, coming with the diagnostic criteria of the APA for cluster A personality disorder. Again, we have cluster A, cluster B. We are not going into the details of what is why it is cluster A, why it is cluster B. We are not going into those details. Uh, remember one thing. Uh, uh, no, there is no point uh, no noting down all the diagnostic criteria. You should not even try to memorize it, you are not going to practice it in the clinic. No? So, there is no point uh, no writing it down or memorizing it. What I will ask you is only to pay attention to what actually is the nature of the problem. So, that uh, if one is reflecting on one's own behavior or looking at the behavior of people in and around oneself one could feel know that is it normal behavior or or is it that such type of behavior requires uh, know an intervention. That is the only reason why we are discussing these things. Now, the diagnostic criteria for paranoid personality disorder, paranoid traits you understand. 
yes no anybody who says no okay so it's basically the degree of suspicion that is attached to it no that you are suspicious about an individual about an act about the whole phenomena that is the defining uh, no uh, criteria for paranoid reactions so in paranoid personality disorder there is a pervasive distrust or suspiciousness of others so i distrust people by and large i am suspicious about them such that their motives are interpreted as malevolent beginning by early adulthood and present in varieties of context as indicated by four okay or more of the following now you have seven different uh, no distinctions made here and out of these seven minimum of four should be achieved okay to be classified as paranoid personality disorder what are them suspects without sufficient basis that others are exploiting harming or deceiving you okay so great degree of suspicion which is basically the defining criteria of paranoid reaction okay and you do not have sufficient basis for it but then still you feel that others are using you you are being exploited there is a looming danger of harm any time the uh, harm might inflict you okay or you are being cheated okay you are deceived two preoccupied with unjustified doubts about the loyalty or trustworthiness of people usually friends and close associates okay so all you do is that you have a doubt on their loyalty okay although you uh, know tend to be very friendly to me but i don't know if you are really my friend and you keep doubting this you stay with this doubt three is reluctant to confide in others because of unwarranted fear that the information will be used okay in a malicious way against that individual so you hear from others but you are extremely reluctant okay you do not confide in people you do not share things with others in close friendships in close associations people confide uh, yaar yeah, please don't tell it to others but you know this has happened to me once i did it people confide in you but those who confide basically the relationship is based on a trust okay a confidence that i have shared it with you and because i have told you that do not tell it to others you will certainly not share it with others that the loyalty would remain there okay in this case you do not trust the loyalty of others at the same time you have your own inability to confide in others and therefore you stay with all types of experiences you do not share it with others this in itself could be great uh, problem no when you keep on keep on storing everything within you for reads hidden demeaning or threatening meaning okay into uh, benign remarks or events no so you somehow you know uh, have a tendency to deliberately read between the lines this is what your claim is that although things are not clearly spelled out but i can very easily make meaning out of it okay i can read between the lines and i can understand that there is uh, you no know, although the line is positive but the intention is wrong so overall you consider that this is demeaning to you okay you consider that this could be threatful for your own ego five persistently you bear some amount of grudge against others okay like you do not forget the insult that was committed to you once the teacher slapped you once and even after 40 years sometime that slap echoes in your ears okay you are not able to forget that insult some injury that has taken place you are not able to forget it okay or sudden slights that has happened to you so basically you know once somebody you hold responsible for some negative experience of your life you do not forget that in uh, you do not forgive that individual you neither forget the episode nor forgive the individual okay the sixth one 
there is a perceived attack on his or her character or reputation that are not apparent to others and is quick to react <coughs> in the state of anger okay or you counter attack okay so basically once again you perceive certain amount of attack that can take place and therefore you retaliate okay you counter attack because you can see that your character your reputation is at stake and the last one has a recurrent suspicion without justification regarding fidelity of spouse or sexual partner out of these seven okay minimum of four should be present for an individual to be classified as paranoid personality disorder okay now if you look at this and you say that fine no even in my own wing uh, there are seven uh, people we are very close to each other we do spend sufficient time together but i don't trust four of them that could be a practical situation no but the truth also is that when you say that i do not trust four of them it also means that you are saying that i trust three of them okay remember that uh, uh, i'm deviating now you would find two set of people people who are very good in terms of initiating relationships or yaar how are you it's so nice meeting you in one go they will start you know uh, you know introducing themselves the interaction will begin and they are very smart in terms of initiating relationship and the opposite end you have people who are not very good at initiating relationship so you make them into a room they will come and very quietly occupy the chair look at the blackboard which has not uh, been uh, you know filled with any details but you keep on keep on doing that and the person sitting next to you you ensure that you do not talk to him or her basically i am saying that you are bad at initiating relationship but there could be a possibility that the person who is not good at initiating relationship could be fantastic in terms of maintaining relationship so people whom you can classify as people who are very good at initiating relationship people who are very good at maintaining relationship so if once i am your friend if i am friendly to you then irrespective of whatever comes on our way throughout the life we maintain that friendship okay any relationship is bound to you know, have some hiccups okay some ups and downs are bound to happen but then you show great degree of uh, you know your ability in terms of maintaining it you can very easily classify people in these two categories no people who are good at initiating relationship people who are good at maintaining relationship and people who are usually very good at maintaining relationship will tell you um how many friends do i have one two and usually will realize that they have very difficulty going beyond three or four okay for last so many years so many uh, you know right from school mates to people in the neighborhood to uh, wing mates to batch mates to what not people who came for tekriti antaragni and all types of festivals no and still you say that in my life i could find three good friends but you say that you know we are still in touch with each other we have never met since we graduated but we are still in touch with each other that's the degree of maintaining relationship people who are very good at initiating relationships are usually uh, bad in terms of sustaining the level of friendship okay therefore uh, in paranoid setup okay when you are driven with that paranoid personality disorder it's not that you will uh, no have you have, we will have only limited number of friends by and large people who have this tendency the way we are classifying them good at initiating or maintaining relationship we will have a uh, no a limited number of friends okay uh, i'm sure you know on the facebook accounts if you see you would find people who will you know keep sending ad requests to all types of people no and you take pride in saying that i have right now 10566 friends in my list the number is what matters okay people who would you know suddenly you know poke you hi i am not feeling sleepy okay 
and you'd find people who would uh, know be very reluctant they'll receive uh, know the ad requests okay and usually they will refrain from adding them to their list you will find both type of people okay paranoid uh, personality type is basically based on the fact that there is an there is a pervasive inner feeling within you which doesn't allow you to trust others it could be your friends it could be your colleagues it could be your own partner okay the seventh one you somehow have great degree of inability understanding that the person could actually be very true to me so you do not find others to be trustworthy and at the same time because of this uh, intention you do not even feel sharing yourself you do not open yourself and this is a double blind that you are basically adopting in life no so neither you allow yourself to open up before others and those who do so you do not trust them so first barrier for your own self second barrier in terms of not positively evaluating them this is what defines the paranoid personality disorder then we come to the schizoid personality disorder schizoid basically you uh, know is closer to the schizophrenic tendency no a pervasive pattern of detachment from social relationships prominence is of detachment in social relationships and a restricted range of expression of emotions in interpersonal settings so you have only limited number of emotional expressions that you show in public beginning once again uh, by early adulthood and present in a variety of context and remember once again out of 7 minimum 4 should be achieved for it neither desires nor enjoys close relationships including being part of a family you can understand how weird it could be okay that you do not have the desire okay to be part of something including family okay so no close relationships with anybody to almost always chooses solitary activities people who are bad in terms of group activities uh, i must be uh, to share with you, you know that in certain type of uh, uh, recruitment processes okay you have certain type of task group tasks okay uh, especially in the um, say uniformed services uh, i i don't know about the police intake process i think there they don't do it to the best of my knowledge but armed forces okay uh, the elite commando trainings okay there you have you no know, certain type of group activities and the person who moderates the whole show ensures that you should participate as a group not individually okay so usually what happens as individuals we have our own capabilities everybody has certain capability you no know? at the same time every individual has his or her own limitations no so if you are able to chip in with your own abilities then as a group you become very very strong and therefore if you are able to work in a group if you are able to become a good leader or even a good follower you will find uh, literature in psychology uh, which would suggest you that only good leaders can be good followers so even if you show your ability as a very good follower in a certain setup which means that given an opportunity you can be an exemplary leader okay so if you do not succeed in performing things in a group then in uh, certain intake processes the whole group is wiped out okay this group this set of people they cannot work in group so not recommended for a given type of a task you cannot join the profession okay in schizoid personality type these people have their great inability in terms of working with others okay now working with others is again a usual problem that you will find in people who have very heightened ego okay you remember we had uh, discussed once no the pilots and the co pilots and the flight engineers their interaction in the flights no there are interesting psychological studies on uh, air crashes suggesting that the personality type of the pilot okay influences uh, no the accident to certain extent 
So, if you have uh, your inability to work in group and you show your uh, preference to work in isolation, that is the second criteria. Third, has little if any interest in having sexual experience with other person. Okay. So, even that lust, the biological urge that you find which is naturally available to all human beings, all animal species, you find that here is the person who does not have a lust for that. Four, takes pleasure in selected activities, very few, if any. Lacks close friends or confidence, okay, other than first degree relatives. You have your first degree relative would be your parents. Okay. Beyond that, you do not intimately interact with people. Okay. Appears indifferent to praise or criticism of others. So, either you pray, oh great work, great, 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 you clap and this man is very neutral and you criticize, what have you done? Again very neutral. Okay. I must tell you uh, that you should accept this very criteria with a pinch of salt, because uh, in religious text you would find uh, that they prescribe rather that you should attain a state of indifference. Where neither uh, praise deviates you from your track nor does criticism. So, you have chosen a path, you have your defined goal and you are trying to achieve it. You should not be uh, no, uh, made to uh, swing from the desired track that you have thought for yourself based on praise or criticism. This is you will find uniformly in all religious texts. Okay. But here basically what it means uh, is uh, that the indifference which is not guided by the way it is described in the religious context, but it is basically because you have difficulty in processing affect of others. And last one shows emotional coldness, detachment or flattened emotional reactions. No? So, you are emotionally numb, very cold, nice to see you. I am sure you must have seen one or two people like that. No? People who will shake their hand, but will know ensure that you catch hold only of small part of their palm. No? Okay. And you go with a broad smile, nice meeting you. Okay, that coldness in the reaction. Okay. Detachment, something has happened and you say, Achha, you have fallen on fracture, maybe doctors will heal it. Usually, the normal reaction is that once something happens, you feel attracted towards it. No? And if you find that there is actually, you know, if a fracture has taken place, you, there is a natural sense of a concern that comes for the sufferer. Okay. And there is a flattened effect, flattened effect is no, no emotional swings. No? So, the context might change and accordingly the desired uh, emotional reaction will change, but then nothing changes in you that is the schizoid personality type. Okay, but again, uh, what I would like to do is that just two more uh, subtypes are there. Once we discuss that, we will once again revisit that whole uh, you know, extremes of behavior with, that we had discussed with respect to uh, what dimensions of subjective adjustment okay. and then we will try to correlate. No? Let us see there also we were talking about extremes, here also we are talking about extremes. Okay. So, in terms of extreme of normal behavior also, where to draw the line that if the moment I cross it, I am no more normal clinically speaking. Okay. So, we will perform that exercise in the coming week.